What's up y'all? Chad Fox here with another Have a Drink with Chad Fox creative writing session going live. I'm going to play a, a recent song that I wrote. It's called Matriarch. Had some technical difficulties last time, so I'm doing this a little bit different this time. What's up, James? Good to see you. Yeah, I definitely like Nick Cave. He's got that, that sound kind of similar to me to some Leonard Cohen type tunes. What do you use to record your songs, James? I use a uh, eight channel fire pod hooked to a computer. Most of my songs I've recorded in my living room. Yeah, I definitely love Leonard Cohen. He's probably one of my biggest inspirations in music and poetry as well. He's written novels, poetry books. I mean, he was he was one of the greats. So, uh, we're going to continue with drinking a glass of Cuddy Sark blended scotch whiskey. This stuff is really good. I've Kind of knocked a little bit of it out riding, as you can see. But, uh, let's see what we got. Set a timer for 45 minutes on this one. Last time we went over an hour. Oh, yeah, Trent, what up? Punk for life. This, uh, this scotch has a really, really smooth taste. It's really easy to drink. I love scotches that are a little stronger. You know, single malt scotches are a little better to me, but these ones really go down smoothly. Oh yeah. 
real good like perfect for all riders who wish to get a buzz and write a few words a little stamp from last time <laughs> Halloween's gone but the spirit's still there so last time we went over some creative writing techniques and uh, started a science fiction storyline something that we might make a little short story out of maybe turn it into something else who knows the basic idea was that sometime in history, I don't know if y'all can hear my cat, but he's bugging out. Uh, sometime in history, everyone collectively started to think the same thought. Whether it was forced on them or not, I think it's more of just the collective consciousness brought them together through that. And, uh, eventually the whole world was ruled by that one thought. So, uh, we brainstormed some, some characters last time. We're going to have a scientist. So 300 years after that, you know, a group of scientists. We're actually, I, I decided maybe we're going to pull this into a group of scientists, right? With a lead scientist. I don't know what y'all think about that. Last time we had a bunch of good ideas about time travel and uh, I want to share a dream I had last night. I dream a lot. They're very vivid and I dreamt that I was in my office here explaining the, the science fiction storyline that we have going. The, uh, when thought became ruler and uh, I'm telling the person, you know, we, we had just, we had talked about maybe time travel being a part of this. And then the person who I don't know who they are, it was a dream, but they asked me, what's the thought, you know, what is that thought that's going to bring everyone together and rule everybody under one, one, uh, one idea there. So uh, in the dream, it came to me instantly in this weird epiphany kind of way that time itself, because we mentioned time travel, time changed the entire world. It changed how we think of everything. Time is that thought. It's a man-made concept that rules us by the second, by the minute, by the millisecond instruments and, and, and people going to work, all these things were ruled by time now. And in the dream, it actually scared me. <laughs> and I woke up abruptly and realized that this has already happened in real life through time. And anyway, just thought I'd run that past y'all that dream there that, uh, Kind of tied in, you know, tied into the whole thing. Max, come here. Come here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Got my kitty Max over here. I love kitties. Come here, boy. This is Max. Ooh, boy. He doesn't drink much, but uh, he's still okay. What do you think, Max? What do you think? You're on camera. Trent says an illusion with purpose. I like that. I like that. Get out, boy, get out. Quit making all that noise. So I'm going to read a, a quote again out of one of my favorite inspirational books. Helps with the creative process. This one's called Flower Thoughts. I think the camera might be backwards there on this one because I've got the camera inverted. This one's by Henry Ward Beecher. 
You cannot forget it. If you would, those golden kisses all over the cheeks of the meadow, queerly called dandelions. These are quotes about flowers. Here's another one by uh, William Cox Bennett. God wills but ill, the doubter said. Low time doth evil only bear. Give me a sign, his love to prove, his vaunted goodness to declare. The poet pointed where a flower, a simple daisy, starred the sod and answered, Proof of love and power behold, behold a smile of God. Love that. Here's one by St. Augustine. The sun has imagined himself in the center of each of these flowers, as the sun of righteousness will image himself in each of your hearts. From this sun in the daisy, white rays spread round. So may the rays of purity and goodness spread around you, reflected the light of heaven within you. James says he takes alpha brain before bed, <clears throat> and that it intensifies his dreaming. I, uh, I, uh, I've done a lot of lucid dreaming. Um, I've trained myself to question in my dreams whether I'm dreaming or not by always flipping on a light switch on and off. Before I go to bed, I'll switch a light switch on and off, and then when I get into the dream, I'll attempt to turn light switches on and off, and when they don't work, it's a signal to me that I'm dreaming, and that's when it gets really lucid and I get control. Uh, Trent says, name him after a bass player. The, uh, the main scientist, name him after a bass player. That's a good idea because Trent, known as El Bobby Gatto, is a bass player from another dimension who just happens to be an astrophysicist. Sherry Kilpatrick has joined, my mom. Good to see you. We were just going over some of the ideas from last time for the science fiction story. Trent says, sounds like some acid bath. Um, is Alpha Brain an on it supplement? Is that correct? I may be wrong about that. Again, we're drinking Cuddy Sark today. Blended Scotch whiskey. Really smooth. I like to get a good, good smell of it. Before I hit it on the palate, mm. squish it around there, let it do its thing. Max is my cat. We also call him Mad Max because he does a lot of mad things. All right, so the trusty pen. The writer's tool, sword, so to say. So last time we talked about naming a uh, the main character with the last name Bartholomew and a different first name, but I actually like the name Bart. So whether it's the main character or not, I like the name Bart from The Simpsons, of course. Bart Simpson being... One of the coolest people of all time. Deborah has just joined us. Good to see you, Deborah. <clears throat> We're going over some of the science fiction storyline ideas from last time. Trent suggested that we maybe name one of the characters after a bass player, which I love. What could be more scientific than music? So uh, give us some bass player names, Trent. Ones that sound smart. 
or so cool that it's smart. Awesome, good to see you, Deborah. Having us a drink. Letting the ice melt so it gets nice and smooth. Oh yeah. Real good. I like this. Uh, James says, uh, what if the thought was a metaphysical organism like an interdimensional virus? And he says time is also a dimension. I remember uh, Sherry, my mom, mentioned last time, what if there were some other entities involved that maybe came from our past, if I remember correctly. Deborah's having a brandy. I love to have a brandy sometimes. Cognac kind of reminds me of having a brandy. I like Cognac. Uh, Remy Martin's one of me and Brent's favorite. Brent knows. Oh, Trent says, did I name my cat after a bass player? Gotcha. No, I looked, I took one look at him and it, Max, he was a Max. Every day since then, he's been Max and uh, he lives up to it. Max is a great bass player though. Shout out to Max McGee of Heavy Waters. Uh, <laughs> I still like the idea of putting a bass player's name. Trent says Duff is a good one. <laughs> Another Simpsons reference. I like McDuff. <laughs> Bart McDuff. Because it kind of is a play on The Simpsons. Bart McDuff. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right, so he's going to be one of the scientists. I think we should make a group of scientists also, and uh, the scientists are actually going to be, you know, 300 years after the initial thought happens. So, I think the story should maybe have two parts where it, it has the beginning part that tells what happened and shows what happened and outlines the exact story. And then fast forward 300 years to when scientists are only allowed to work within the parameters of the single thought. But some of them start to break free from that and start uh, doing thought experiments. Bart McDuff, scientist. Also a bass player. Gonna have to drink this drink a little faster this time. Last time we went over over an hour. Got the timer set for 45 minutes on this one. About halfway halfway through there. So uh, so how can we correlate the thought, time, and other entities all together in this story? of a three to four hundred year period when thought ruled and to the point where everything was so good that people wanted to know what wasn't good, right? <clears throat> we need a female scientist. Um... Make a little diverse group here of scientists for our, for our group, and we'll give them a group name. People love groups. People love the secrecy behind meeting in secret and discussing things. 
Donna Kennedy has just joined, my aunt. Thanks, Donna. I'm not sure if you were here for the last one, but we're discussing an idea for a, a science fiction short story. I like that, Sherry. Thoughts are places in time. So what if, like uh, James said, thoughts are dimensions, and my mom says thoughts are places in time, that kind of correlates there with, you know, like, you could live in a dimension of a, a single thought in time, right? Like, the time that you had the thought is a dimension that you can go to and from. Or that time in general, there's a saying in a, a passphrase in Freemasonry, that the time is now. And uh, I think they really understood what that means <laughs> in, in, in what we're talking about here as time being as a, a tool to to bring us all under one concept, kind of like this idea here. So I'm really liking the time side of things here. Um, back to uh, brainstorming a female scientist. Um, sometimes I like to use people from my past, like last time I, I mentioned Miss Bartholomew, the bus driver <laughs> from Leander, and I uh, ended up just going with Bart McDuff because the Simpsons <clears throat> but uh, for a female name I want to pull from uh, from something uh, a memory speakeasy Trent says that's a cool idea um, a memory that you can go back to and have a drink over and over again right you can go back into that thought and that dimension and relive it. Because maybe, maybe being unified under this one thought of time and that the time is now um, allows us to use time in a different way than, than, than what enslaves us now, right? We break free from it. James says Sharona Knight. Well, I'm writing Sharona down. Sharonda. Sharonda Knight. I like that. That was a good, uh, diverse feel to it there. I also like that you spelt it knight as in a knight with a sword. We could maybe make her the character that that uh, isn't the main character, but she's the righteous one, right? Sharonda Knight, the righteous scientist and thought leader. Trent says, like in the future, memories are legal, or are I think he meant illegal, and you have to go to speakeasies. Is that what you meant, Trent? These are all really good ideas. Um, I'm gonna write a. Well, we wrote a brief time time uh, frame that first time, but I think we want to split this into two two major parts before and after. So in the before part, we're going to uh, we're going to focus on how the thought took over and what the thought is. So what is the thought? Question mark. I'm going to answer that with time. Let's go with this concept of time, but time can also be dimensional, like we said, and, and it's going to have a lot more than just being time. So, uh, what is the thought time? 
and how did thought become ruler? Or in this case, how did time become ruler? Okay, so those are the questions we want to answer in the before part of the story. And the after part of the story is when our scientists come together and start, start with thought experiments and decide that the 9 to 5 everyday grind, the 60 seconds in a minute, all these things can't be all there is, you know. We can't put all these complexities into one system of time. No problem, James. Great to see you, man. Thanks for coming by. I'm going to play one of your tunes at the end of this, and I'll go ahead and put that link in there. I'm also going to put a link to James Allen's new album, Twain. I believe it's on Bandcamp. If y'all want to wanna listen to that or purchase his album, that'd be great. He's a local musician from Austin, and he's a kick-ass dude. So, uh, in the before phase, we have what is the thought, which we've answered with time. How did it become ruler is a question, which we'll answer with another session of brainstorming. And uh, in the after now, we have peace on earth. So somehow this concept of time, somehow this concept of time has uh, created peace, right? The, the world a million, well, the world thousands of years ago was a savage place. A lot of more, a lot more deaths, you know, that one of the reasons the population has grown so much is because there is more peace on earth. You know, we're all, we're all talking about how terrible things are around the world, and there are terrible things. But uh, right now, things are pretty peaceful. But even though I mentioned that this could be a now scenario, really we want to focus on, on the concept being in, in, in this time period, right? And then 300 years from now, in the future, where technology has advanced... It, it becomes the absolute ruler. So the idea of time itself, I don't think is good enough for the thought. It has to have some kind of dimensional uh, aspect to it because, I mean, it's great to play back on the fact that we're already in this, this uh, time period where, again, time period, where the ruler of things has become a single thought called time. But, uh... Let's bring a, a, a dimensional vibe to this. Trent says, there is no need for, for money. Memories and time are our currency. That's a good idea. There's a, there's a, what was that, that movie with, a, I think it was Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt maybe? Or no, 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 no. It was a, Justin Timberlake, a JT, a, when time was currency. I think, think it was called Time, maybe, but that was a really good one. And uh, can't forget Time Cop with uh, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. So we got Peace on Earth, and then we have... Um, we have a period after the 300 years where um, where the, the current status quo is not enough, right? People are wanting to think outside of the single concept. So we're going to have thought experiments, right? And that's where our, our characters come in. Bart McDuff, scientist and bass player. 
and Sharonda Knight, scientist and um, Sharonda is the one who uh, Bart kind of kind of goes off 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 the off the page, right? He does his own thing, but Sharonda is by the book. <clears throat> Sherry says science has dissipated. And people are ruled by only feelings. That would kind of eliminate the whole idea that our main characters are scientists. But uh, what if feelings are science? So they would they would be it wouldn't be thought experiments. It would be feeling experiments. But but still science, right? I don't know. Uh, so peace on earth, thought experiments. And then we're going to have the formation of a group. And ideally this is going to be a group of scientists who all started to think outside of the status quo and, and came together through maybe a uh, online forum or something. Science fiction is a cool thing to kind of, to do this way because, uh, there's so many, you know, 300 years from now, imagine what technology would be. Is there going to be an internet? Is, is the internet, you know, I don't know if y'all, y'all live in Austin. If y'all saw a couple weeks ago, they reported, uh, hundreds of UFOs in the sky in Austin. And it turned out that it was Elon Musk launching a hundred satellites for his old idea. He was talking about this 15 years ago, that if you put 200 satellites into the, into the, into orbit all the way around us, it would create a net all the way around the world that could transmit an internet signal so that you could get internet anywhere in the world at any time, which is an awesome idea. And, and he was never able to make it work, but look where he is now, even though I heard he was having some money issues, obviously not, right? So a formation of a group of scientists, and uh, let's check our time here. Only got about 10 minutes left, so we're going to move on from this. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and share a poem with y'all that's actually a nursery rhyme from uh, a new book that I have coming out. It's a book of poems and uh, compositions called uh, Golden Triangles. It's my little book. I know the words might be backwards there because the phone's flipped, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read it out loud here. This is called Kitten with a Smile, and it's a nursery rhyme. It's actually about a little bird and a kitten. So, uh, little bird, you've fallen still, your eyes are open not. Your nest is warm, your feathers twitch, and mother's gone to hunt. Careful sleeping beauty, you're sleeping in the wild. Below your nest, while you rest, a kitten with a smile. Just a short nursery rhyme I wrote. I mean, I think we've all known a few little birds in our life. People that come around and change our lives and then flutter off, right? And I think we've all known a few smiling kittens. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and leave some links real quick to uh, James's uh, SoundCloud page. And I'm also going to leave a link to his band camp where you can purchase his album. We listened to some of his tunes last time. I'm actually going to end with one of his songs as well. Let's pick.
paste this in here. So that link there will go to his album that he's just finished that is for sale. It's called Twang. It's got some great tunes on it. Do a little stamp here with my trusty note cards. Like I said in the last uh, segment, I love these legal pads. I, I have hundreds of these. I fill them up. I usually, uh, one single chapter can usually fill up two or three of these when you're writing for books and things. But, uh, thanks, Deborah. I, uh, I've included a few nursery rhymes in my, my new poetry book and I uh, have, a, have a website I'm working on about foxes called allthingsfoxes.com and I'm going to be recording some fox nursery rhymes and uh, posting them to the Facebook and YouTube coming up so that'll be exciting. So whenever y'all are having creative issues and you're you just you know you're stumped, you get in a writer's block. A really good thing to do is doodle, draw things, you know, just little things like flowers or whatever. They uh, they spark that part of your brain that. It's the creative side, and uh, it gets you going. You start, you start having having good ideas and thoughts just come to you just from from the creative things like drawing and poems and fun stamps and things like that. I love stamps. I have a stamp collection. I uh, I make my own stamps. This is actually one of my my stamps that's. One of my, part of my logo. You want to check that out? It's a fox, a Chad Fox. <clears throat> Foxes and pumpkins and you know fun stuff. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. I think we're getting down to our forty-five minutes here. Going to go ahead and play some tunes to, to end this segment. Thanks for all y'all that came by here. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. We'll work on this storyline again next time. I know we didn't really get that far and almost just recapped really from last time, but we're kind of working it together, you know. When you're, when you're doing creative writing, you have to... So many things are said and thought by a single person that you, you can write them all down and come back to them later and just it'll work itself out because it's there the, the the story is there and when you're when you're having when you're doing the creative process you know bringing you to the story is part of the process just putting things out there so and 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 scotch scotch is an important part of the story Looking up some tunes here from James. This uh, Cuddy Sark is really good, y'all. If you haven't tried it, you should try it. I've uh, recently expanded my, my palette to things like this. Probably going to try to go with the single malt on the, on the next one. We're probably going to try to do a uh, bi-weekly, or I mean a uh, bi-monthly here, twice a month, probably the first and third uh, Thursdays. So...
One moment. This is going to be music from James Allen's new album, Twang, available on Bandcamp. I, sh I shared the link there. If you uh, dig his music, purchase his album. Help a, help a local musician out. A lot of us are musicians. Got to help each other out, yo. This is Twang by J.R. Allen. And that is our alarm, y'all. That ends this segment of Have a Drink with Chad Fox. Hope y'all have a good one, and we'll see you next time.